Welcome parents, family, friends, and visitors. Welcome to the Hokum High School virtual graduation ceremony this evening. I'm Mike Villarreal, the proud superintendent of the Hokum School District. Thank you for watching Hokum's 128th high school graduation. Before I share some thoughts, I want to personally thank the entire high school, Hokum, high, Hokum School District family, which made this event happen. We want to especially thank our maintenance and custodial teams for preparing Olympic Stadium, our high school staff, senior parents, and Rick Moyer for the video production this evening. Additionally, I want to say thank you to all the civic organizations, associations, and individuals that committed hundreds of thousands of dollars to our graduates through scholarships and grants. The money represents their hard work and a great deal of fundraising. I'm going to now read a, a list of few statements that were made years ago by some experts in the field. With the passing of time, they don't sound very smart at all. First quote, there is no reason for any individual to have a computer in their home. Made by Kenneth Olson, president of the and founder of Digital Equipment Corporation in 1977. Airplanes are interesting toys, but have no military value. Marshal Ferdinand Fru, French military strategist and future World War commander in 1911. Man will never reach the moon regardless of all future scientific advances. Dr. Lee Forrest, inventor of the Audion tube and the father of radio on February 25, 1967. Television won't be able to hold on to any market it captures after the first six months. People will get tired of looking at a plywood box every night. Daryl F. Zanwick, head of 20th Century Fox in 1946. We don't like their sound. Groups with guitars are on the way out. Decca Records after they rejected the Beatles in 1962. For the majority of the people, the use of tobacco has a beneficial effect. Dr. Ian G. McDonald, Los Angeles surgeon, as quoted in Newsweek, November 18, 1969. Nothing of importance happened today. Written by King George III of England on July 4, 1776. Everything can, that can be invented has been invented. Charles D. Huell, U.S. Commissioner of Patents in 1899. Each one of those experts never thought in their wildest dreams their current reality would change. From March 16th, our realities have, have not been the same. No other senior class will ever be able to say the same to all the experiences that have taken place since then. During this closure, you as students have had the chance to embark on online learning and you realize that organization mattered. You also realize you only get what you put into it. The only assignments and tasks that got done were the ones that you decided to get done. You also learn that technology is changing daily. You learn that Google Classrooms and breakout rooms were important. You learn that Zoom conferencing and Google Hangouts brought people together. You realize that social media is not the same as social interaction. As humans, we're all wired for human contact. You got creative, to, you got creative and decided to celebrate birthdays by drive-bys. Zoom meetings and virtual hangouts that allow you to eat, socialize, pray, worship, even virtually. You learned that thoughtful conversations could take a place around the dinner table. You also learned that relationships matter. So I've got a question for you, class of 2020. I'm gonna make you rich, and here's how you're gonna do it. In Sean Covey's book, Seven Habits for Effective Teens, he shares the concept of a personal uh, bank account, PBA, and he gives six different steps. He says we need to make deposits into this personal bank account daily, or try to at least. Here's the first one. Keep promises to yourself. Make commitments and keep them. Start something and finish it. It could be something very small like making your bed or even saving money for a car. 
setting goals, going to work, college, relationships, becoming healthier. Regardless of those promises, do them for yourself. The only person who will know whether you achieve them or not is yourself. When you keep promises to yourself, you deposit into that personal bank account. Cha-ching. Number two, do small acts of kindness. Have you ever felt down on yourself, worried and lonely? We all have. In fact, some of you may be experiencing that right now. Research says that if you feel depressed, the best thing you can do is to do something for somebody else. Why? Because it gets you focused outward rather than inward. It's hard to be depressed when you're serving someone. When's the last time you did something for something kind for a stranger, a friend, or even your parents, or maybe a brother or sister? Caring leads us to charity. Kindness for others is always a deposit into your personal bank account. Number three, be gentle with yourself. Being gentle means many things. It means not expecting yourself to be perfect by tomorrow morning. It means that you recognize that life is going to be tough. It means that sometimes you make wrong decisions and it's not the end of the world. Find the silver lining in life. It means, it means learning to laugh at the stupid things that we do. Be patient and give yourself time to grow. Life will give you experiences every day. Recognizing the journey that you're on, you'll be happier. ka -ching. Number four, be honest. Honest has many synonyms. An upstanding, incorruptible, moral, principled, truth-loving, steadfast, true, real, right, good, straight shooting, genuine. Honesty comes in many different forms. Every, every act of honesty is a deposit into your personal bank account and will build you your strength. Honesty is always known as the best policy, even when it's not the right trend. Being honest is knowing who you really are and standing up and for your beliefs. ka -ching. Number five, renew yourself. Take time for yourself. Time to renew and relax. If you haven't figured out something that brings you joy and peace, you need to do it now. Find peace or of, find a place of refuge so you can renew yourself. This could be a location or activity. Start. It could be walking, running, watching old movies, fishing, hunting, playing a musical instrument, painting, providing service for someone else in need. This past year, I was introduced to crabbing. Honestly, it's given me a mental and physical escape from my daily activities that I yearn for every day. Spending time with my family and time on the water allows me to rethink and charge. I believe renewing your, yourself frequently can double deposit into your personal bank account. ka -ching. Number six, last one. Tap into your talents. Finding and then developing a talent, hobby, or special interest can be one of the single greatest deposits you can make into your personal bank account. It's beyond traditional high-profile talents like athletes or dancers or scholars. What about reading? What about writing, speaking, music, chess, woodworking, working on cars, sewing, writing music, composing music, becoming an expert in something? I actually met a young man who's an expert in isopods. Look that up if you don't know what it is. Do something that you like to do and develop a talent for it. It's a form of the self-expression. Ka-ching. Speaking of talents, this past fall, I had the opportunity to help with the senior, high school senior interviews during business week. It was great to see the class of 2020 share their goals and their talents. Liam Odell was one of the seniors that I had the opportunity to visit with. I watched him play baseball for our talented Grizzly baseball team over the years. While Liam shared his desire to attend his Volta Lineman School, his eyes lit up when he talked about his love for fishing. It wasn't long before the conversation turned into types of fishing rigs, poles, baits, and the beautiful Grays Harbor. It's that kind of passion that I know that Liam will become a great lineman. Additionally, Liam will always have the love for the great outdoors because of the fishing talent that he's developed. I promise you that if you make a personal bank account deposit daily, when life makes withdrawals and gives you challenges, you always find a little green in there. No one will be able to wipe out your account. You will find joy in life and make others happy too. 
Each of you will embark on, very, embark on various journeys, universities, colleges, armed forces, workforce, and even take some time at home, at home trying to figure it all out. Regardless, for each of you, your new journey begins tomorrow. It will be tough, however, I know that it will be worthwhile as you gain new experiences and opportunities. Use your Hokum education to expand your learning and never do the easy thing. Your education becomes a value when you use it to become a better person, to contribute to society and change the world for a better. Make your family, your community, and Hokum proud as you fulfill your dreams. In closing, Harriet Tubman, an escaped slave who was responsible for freeing hundreds of slaves, said the following, Always remember that you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach the stars to change the world. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Good evening. I am Gracie Thompson, and this is Lily Dern, and we are your co-valedictorians for the Class of 2020. We are honored to be here tonight so that we may congratulate you on your achievements and say our final farewells. On behalf of the senior class, I would like to thank all the people that make Hokum High School what it is. I want to thank the administration for always doing what is best for the school and making tough decisions when needed. We thank you. I would like to thank the faculty for working tirelessly to give us the best education they can and push us even when we don't want to work. I thank you for giving us a great environment to learn in and for always being there even when times are rough. I thank you for taking the time to build relationships with us that for some might last a lifetime. We thank you. I want to thank the non-teaching staff who work behind the scenes coordinating our every day and working tirelessly to keep us on track. We thank you. I want to thank our maintenance staff for working day in and day out to keep the school pristine and in amazing shape. We thank you. I want to thank the families of the seniors for always supporting us, loving us, sacrificing for us, and pushing us to succeed. I thank the parents and the guardians who have helped pay for us and support us through our education. We thank you. This year in senior participation, there was one senior in Eagle Scouts, 12 in band, four in color guard, four in choir, five in drama, two in cross country, one in girls soccer, eight in football, four in volleyball, nine in cheerleading, two in knowledgeable, five in boys basketball, two in girls basketball, one in wrestling, two in fast pitch, five in baseball, seven in track and field, six in boys soccer, and two in girls golf. And this year, we brought back the football title with a record of 878,869.5 pounds. Both communities combined brought in a total record of 1,754,300, sorry, 353.2 million pounds of food and money for our communities. Our class should be very proud of the participation mentioned in this list, as well as other activities done outside of school. It's crazy how much we have done in the last four years. When we started high school, it was a clean slate full of new opportunities and adventures. We were excited little freshmen marveling at all the small freedoms high school can give. We got the hang of the workload, but freshman year for the class of 2020 had a rough end. We lost a friend and had to learn how to come back to school and keep going, even with that missing piece in our lives. We still miss him and all the others, but we'll keep the memory alive in the things we do as our lives go on. We will not forget. Sophomore year, I do not know about the rest of you guys, but this year was the funnest and most memorable year of high school for me. We finally got our license and the long-awaited free, long freedom that comes with it. We became closer as a class after learning that our lives are short and we don't want to regret the missed opportunities. I also, I also managed somehow to read over 80 books the year of 2018. I swear I must have never slept. 
I got to experience the amazing class that is Mr. Helen's sixth period chemistry class and the chaos that comes with it. I got to see my peers grow and excel and while we were not upperclassmen yet, we still stood tall and had a good time. Junior year. Now, this is when my experience, experiences, as well as some other students, starts to differ from the rest of my class as we took on the monster that is full-time running start. I can say how high school is for a most of the time college student, but I cannot recap the environment and memories that were made on Hokum's campus that year. For me, it was a hard year. I had to transition into the lifestyle of constant studying and much less free time. I know for juniors, this is the year when we finally become upperclassmen. It is a new phase in our time at high school where things are a little tougher, but we are made, or we that, we are that much closer to graduating. And lastly, senior year. The year we have been waiting for since we knew it was a thing. This fall was a very exciting time for us. We had many lasts, some even without knowing. We didn't know what was coming and the sacrifices we were going to have to make. Over the last five months, we have been thrown a few heavy stones and yet look at us today. We are standing on this stage in cap and gown, ready to say goodbye to our last 13 years and hello to the whole world. On that note, I would like to address the elephant in the room. I mean, stadium. While it may be depressing, it needs to be said. I know that our year, the year that was supposed to be our class of 2020's year was mercilessly cut off by a situation that is out of everyone's hands. Instead of having what was supposed to be the best part of our year, it was replaced with an epidemic that created fear, anxiety, depression, and uncertainty. I know that I can't say anything that will make you feel better. No one can. People say we are a part of history in the making, but usually the people who are a part of history wish they never were. One of the only things this event has allowed for us is self-reflection. I've had a lot of time to think on my high school career, and in that process, I realized I wasn't striving to be content, only successful, and that made me dissatisfied with my life. Now, I would use the word happy, but happy is an emotion you feel when you're elated and joyous. It is nearly impossible to be happy for long periods of time. But the state of being content is something you can feel for most of your life. Now, while in school, I strived for perfect grades, and those grades have given me a lot, as you can see, but they took a lot away as well. Maintaining my grades has taken a lot of time out of my life. Time I should have spent building relationships, spending time with loved ones, and just having fun. Instead, I stressed and worried and overdid things because I wanted to be successful. I totally neglected my life goal of living a content life. Now, while some of you might relate to my story, I know a lot of you won't. I would like you to think on your own life, and then I want you to ask yourself, am I content? Am I comfortable? Am I satisfied with my life? And if you aren't, find the reason and work to fix it. But also know that you can't fix things that are out of your control. The best thing you can do is to work around those obstacles. Also know that in the future when you're striving for your own goals, don't forget about the journey. I know this is cheesy and probably makes you think about that Hannah Montana song that they play every year for the senior slideshow, but it's a classic for a reason. Don't let your sacrifices outweigh the payout. And don't sacrifice your mental health and well-being for it either. I hope you remember at least some of what I said. I admit I'm not the best orator, as you can tell by my mess-ups. And my voice is a little boring. But if you remember at least some of what I said, then I did my job. Thank you, Class of 2020. And special thanks to the audience here as well. Because, you know, without you, I feel like I'm talking to no one. Wow, ain't that a mood. Keeping these points in mind, we will all be going in very different directions, but we all have at least one thing in common. We are a class of 2020. We are powerful, strong, and fierce, and we have pushed through many battles already. The world doesn't know what's coming, and I cannot wait until they find out. 
I'm going to leave you guys with a couple of notes to keep in mind as we say goodbye. One, remember where you came from. The world is a scary and exciting place and it is easy to get lost. Remember your home. Two, remember to have fun. Yes, you have to push to succeed in what you want, but don't forget to take a moment to breathe and see what is already in front of you. And three, remember nothing is impossible. You have the world at your disposal. Take advantage of it. Whether you change many lives or just one, and it can be your own, know you made the world all the better. I wish you all multitudes of luck and love. We are a class of 2020 and we will stand strong. Thank you again to everyone for being here today and also those who are watching from home. Well, hopefully, those who are watching from home don't skip over this part. I'd like to thank you again for helping us become the people we are today. I'd also like to thank the administrators, teachers, non-teaching staff, friends, and family again for the wonderful job they did. I believe we, Class of 2020, will make an impact wherever we may go. Thank you all for helping us succeed and getting to this moment. We love you. We will remember you. We thank you. Farewell and good night. Congratulations, class of 2020. To the oddest and maybe the longest school year I have ever been a part of. But you made it. And it has been my honor serving as your principal for the last four years. I want to thank our school board for going on this wild ride with us. You have been very supportive and of these students and have, and have made the, dis the distance learning a meaningful experience. Thank you, Superintendent Mike Villarreal and our, and our district office staff for their endless support during this time as well. This experience has taught us to think differently, and in the end, we will be better for all of our efforts this year. Thank you to the, all the certified staff and classified staff at Hoquim School District over the last 13 years. It takes many different people with different skill sets to, to raise successful students. And parents, hey, what can I say? <laughs> what a ride. I have worked closer with this group of parents this year than any other group of parents in previous years. I know the countless hours you put in through Zoom sessions. You truly attempted to make this school year memorable for your child. For you, I am grateful. It is you who made each one of these students unique and a special part of our culture at Hoquim High School. And you know, I know the girls already said this, but um, we brought back the food ball title. And um, I'm just so proud of the students and so proud of the community. 878,000 pounds. That's, I mean, that's almost $88,000 that we raised in 10 days. That's amazing. And for a combined effort, Aberdeen and Hoquiam, 1.75 million. I mean, that's, that, those are just astonishing numbers. And um, it only grows from there. Another thing to be really proud of that I'm proud of this year is we have 17 honor grads, but we also have 10 students graduating from Hoquim High School and from Grays Harbor College this year. And uh, those, are, those are really good numbers, and I'm very proud, proud of that. We also have one junior who decided to graduate a year early, and um, he is already committed to the Army. And I already want to thank him for his service that he's about to endure for, for our freedom and our safety. So thank you. Full disclosure, the next part of this presentation will be serious, but then maybe the wildest graduation presentation you had ever seen. I felt we needed a strong message, but we also needed a good laugh tonight as well. It is important that we have balance during these strange times. Another disclosure, I was not even going to give the address tonight. Secretly, I had Dr. Bob Mandich lined up to address the seniors. If you don't recognize that name, he is the man who donated the money to buy all the yearbooks, all the cap and gowns, and he bought all the t-shirts for us this year. And um, he also has approximately $30,000 in scholarship money that he has for our students. I know many of you wanted to thank him personally for this donation, but I guess it was not meant to be. 
Bob, I want to thank you for your commitment to our students, our schools, and our community. Your donation made a lot of families extremely happy this year. I look forward to seeing you at graduation next year. So, lessons learned during the year 2020. I want to share three lessons that I've learned in the year 2020. Lesson number one. It was Frederick Nietzsche who said, He who has a why to live for can almost bear any how. Let me repeat that because I think I screwed it up. That's okay. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. This quote came out of a book I recently read by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. While the title says man, let me assure you that it's human's search for meaning. Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor who lived for years in internment camps during World War II. He was also a famous psychologist. During his time in camps, he saw the worst in people. He saw a lot of death surrounding him. And yet, through it all, he saw prisoners who had a purpose to live for. Might I suggest we start with the concept of why? The idea of starting with why is a huge movement today. It's led by a man by the name of Simon Sinek. Starting with the concept of why will create your how and lead you to what you will accomplish in life. Start with clarity of purpose. This will help you understand the why of what you do. In Frankel's book, he references a study done by John Hopkins University that asks almost 8,000 college students in 48 different colleges what they consider very important. First thing I thought of, what would you think of? You think of, a lot of you are probably thinking they all said money, right? Nope. 16% of the students said money. 78% said finding purpose and meaning in their life. Those are astonishing numbers when you look at it. You see, money is what you get to enjoy when you are living your why or your purpose. Lesson number two. We cannot change certain things in our life, but we can choose our attitude towards these changes. Viktor Frankl wrote, Every human being has the freedom to change at any instant. What is our attitude towards the year 2020 right now? My guess is not very good. I mean, we got COVID. We got people out of work. We have protests going on. We're arguing with China. We have a volcano under Yellowstone that's ready to blow. And oh yeah, we also have murder hornets. So, I mean, we got a lot of things going on right now, right? I make a jest here, but my point is that there are a lot of stress, stressors in our lives. Mayor Winkleman thinks we should make lemonade out of lemons. And I agree. We cannot control life, but we control our attitude towards life. We, can, we, need to, we need to think of this COVID time as an opportunity to reinvent ourselves as people, as communities, and as a nation. I believe we will be stronger if we can change the way we think about this and turn it into an opportunity. Thomas Friedman, who was one of my favorite authors, he wrote, The pessimists are usually right. Think about that. The pessimists in life are usually right. But it's the optimists who change the world. What a powerful statement. Optimists have hope. They have hope that they can make things better. In other words, they have a purpose. Lesson number three. And, I, you know, the, I have to admit, Will Ferrell, I like Will Ferrell. So lesson number three. If you've seen the movie Semi-Pro, the whole, you know, the whole locker rooms in disarray and people are fighting and he just comes in, he says, everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. Well, I think there's a the point to that. Everybody love everybody. That it just makes sense. The only way we can get through this chaos of protests and viruses is simple. But I don't know if we can take the steps forward. I don't know if we can take that step. If you look at social media, there are more people concerned with being right than actually listening to anybody. If you learn anything tonight, students, learn to love people by listening and learning from others that don't believe what you do. We as a nation cannot argue our way to a brighter future. I'm going to repeat that. 
we as a nation cannot argue our way to a brighter future. It just won't work. I believe we as a nation have more in common than what divides us. I watched a video, this reminds me, I actually watched a video the other day. Of, it was a black child, and uh, probably about two years old, walking around a park giving hugs to white people. When you see the division out there, and then you think of this, you think of this child. Our, difference, our differences are a learned behavior. Our differences are a learned behavior. We can unlearn this behavior if we listen with love in our hearts. As Viktor Frankl was laying in a bunk bed in a work camp with all reason to despair and lose hope, he overheard a prisoner tell another prisoner how beautiful the world could be. I'm going to repeat that, how beautiful the world could be. Imagine that, prisoners that are muddy, they're flea-ridden, they're hungry, they're tired, they're sore, they're malnourished, and yet they still have hope in their hearts that the world will be better one day for them. How beautiful the world could be when we listen to each other. How beautiful the world could be when we learn to love each other. How beautiful the world could be when we learn to respect each other. How beautiful the world could be when we learn to honor differences. How beautiful the world could be when we have hope. How beautiful the world could be when we spread that hope. And how beautiful the world could be when we have purpose. How beautiful the world could be when we start loving everybody. You know, those are pretty, that's a, that's a pretty significant statement. And it's one that, you know, you have all the despair and all these things going around you. And I mean, yet you have hope and you still have purpose. And oh yeah, the other thing I learned during our distance learning is that we all have to have our thing that makes us happy. When the world comes too much, becomes too much for you, we all have to have a positive escape. Well, I found out that there are two new things that I love, and that's the 80s style synth wave music and 80s dance montages. So I thought I would get this dance montage going for y'all. We are gonna get this thing going. We put a lot more water in that. I ask you at home right now to raise your right hand, and I will wait. Yep, I'll wait. Parents, make them do it. I'm waiting for you, parents. Go ahead, make them do it. And if you want to, you can record this, because I would love to have you email me students doing this. I'd love to see these, or a picture, if you want to send a, a picture through the school email to me. So, raise your right hand. The first claw, we talked about grizzly pride. 
And the first claw represents perseverance. Never give up. Life may be difficult, but your purpose will keep you going. The second claw represents responsibility. Be accountable. Our world needs people who are willing to be accountable for their actions. The third claw represents integrity. When something has integrity, it is undivided. We need people who are willing to be morally upright citizens. The fourth claw represents dedication. Commit to having purpose, having a positive attitude, and loving others. And the fifth claw represents enlightened. Keep being educated, and maybe, just maybe, we can see how beautiful our world could be. Now put your paw over your heart. And this represents two things. You will go through many trials and tribulations in your life. No matter, no matter what you go through, always remember there are people who love you and that there are people who need to be loved. Don't forget to stay focused on the important things in life. Your paw over your heart also represents that you will forever be a grizzly in your heart. Tonight at the end of this recording, you will be forever a Hoquim grizzly. Don't forget your roots. Don't forget where you came from. And this community who raised you and supported you will always welcome you home. And most importantly, how beautiful our world could be with you in it. Thank you. So as many of you know, we have a tradition here at Hope Group School District, the high school specifically, and uh, that tradition is Class Hearts. Class Hearts has been around for many, many, many years, and it goes to the student who is voted on by the classmates, who is the sweetest and loving and just always has a smile on their face. And so um, this year the class voted, and um, I'm not going to tell you who won. I'm gonna let somebody else do it for me. Hi, um, this class heart is very dear to my heart. Um, I'm very honored to be able to do this this year. Um, this individual has no mean bone in their body. Um, always a smile, like Mr. Maxwell said, doesn't matter what kind of mood or what the weather is, there's always a smile, always a happiness to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. She, they're always very, very happy. So with further ado, this year, Class Hearts 2020 goes to Rochelle Bates. Congratulations, Rochelle. Congratulations, Rochelle, and great job on your voting, Open High School. Um, that she was a very deserving candidate, and uh, very proud of you.
Thank you. Donald Stephen Newman. I made it. Uh, this one's for my family. I love them. Patrick Henry Dingy. I made it, Mother Truckers! <laughs> Danny Boone. Yes! Yes. 
Okay. Right there? Yes. Yeah. I did this for you guys and all of you. Natasha Senatanari Apodaca. <laughs> Alyssa Noel Dame.
Bob Fitzpatrick. I did it!
<laughs> I made it. Michaela May Parsons Kerrigan. Destiny Rochelle Barone.
Casey Lee Harrison. Aqua! Blue Dance System! <laughs> Abby Lynn Spradlin. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for being there for me. <laughs> Joshua William McGregor. Way to go, Josh! Thank you, family. Crystal Paige Schroetberger. Gabriela Tatiana Reyes. Thank <laughs> you. 
you did it. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Liam Christopher Odell.
Family and my friends, I love you all. Thank you for getting me where I'm at. Perfect. Austin James Sigmund. Woo! Get it!
made it. Yay! <laughs> I'd like to thank my teachers for giving me the greatest experience of high school. Um, definitely Mr. Sandstrom, Mrs. Um, Smith, Mr. Dawson, and lastly, Mr. Periani. As many times I've broken nuts, and I'd like to thank my family as well.
Thank you. Leela Page Volke. Thank you for pushing me so hard. Lindsay Ann Marie Wheeler. You can say message. Thank you for all the great four years I had at this school. Thank you to every teacher I had from my past. Thank you. This way, Rory Montgomery Bray. Thank you everyone for everything you've done for me, I guess, up until now. Um, my parents for letting me leech off of them all these years, uh, <laughs> supporting my habits of playing video games all day. The teachers that put up with us, thank you, and I hope everyone has a good future ahead of them.
Thank you to all the teachers and everyone who made my high school experience so amazing. I really appreciate it and I'll miss you guys. Marcus Anthony Wilson. Shout out to anybody you want to say a message to? Oh, uh, thank you to my coaches and my teachers, and especially my principal for letting me do this. I appreciate it. Magdalena Divine Mazariegos. Thank you to my friends and family for pushing me to do my best during my whole high school career. Benjamin Riley Estes. Come over here. 
Okay. Did it. Gracie Lita Thompson. Thank my family. Um, yeah, they're good people. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Carson Renee Munger. Thank you, Mrs. Howard. You have been a real impression on me, and I just thank you for everything you've done for me, for pushing me forward. Thank you. Keegan Joseph Freeman Stiegel. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Lily and Sandra Darren.
Annette Alejandre. Um, I'd like to thank my family and all my friends for supporting me and everyone who's pushed me along the way. And um, uh, class of 2020, please move your tassels over. Congratulations and celebrate and have a good year. Thank you. Thank you.